You're doing something useful. You're not just sitting uh, vegetating. At age 101, Rosa Finnegan is still punching in part-time at small manufacturer Vita Needle. I'm in. By working into old age, Finnegan and those like her are extending their useful lives and their retirement income. But might they also be a boon to the economy? How much are you paid? I don't think I'm allowed to say, am I? No. You're 100 years old. You can say anything you want. What? <laughs> the reason I asked, this year the gap between U.S. government spending and tax revenues is expected to be over $640 billion. Threatening to widen the gap, 32 million Americans reaching retirement age in the next 20 years slated to draw Social Security and Medicare while paying zero taxes on income. So are you slowing down? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> as long as I don't come to a screeching halt, I'll be lucky. But what if Americans worked as long as Rosa Finnegan, whom we interviewed in December? Finnegan was coy about her pay, but whatever she's making, she's paying taxes. Federal and state income, Medicare, and Social Security, which Vita Needle matches. I made my first surfboard in 1960 when I was about 12 years old. Another older worker we interviewed recently 66-year-old Steve Bainey runs Infinity Boards, pays himself about $60,000 a year. His yearly tax tab, more than $18,000. And then there was Mike Gratola, 69, who became a business consultant after trying in vain to get a tech executive job like the one from which he was laid off at age 65. That big six-figure salary, that was so great, you know, da-da-da. But at 65, you're not going to make any headway in doing that, and it was a mistake. Let me go on a path that'll be way more productive. With his new business up and running, last year, Gratola paid close to $15,000 in total taxes on income. Finally, 71-year-old George Mason writing professor Don Galeer. I think this is my 47th year that I'm here. Galeer paid about $35,000 in taxes, including his university's Social Security contribution. He has no plans to retire. Last semester, I had five students come up to me and say it was the best class they had ever had. So apparently I'm still good for my students. Overall, 18% of Americans 65 and older are now working and paying taxes. At least $120 billion a year, we figure, on average. A figure that doesn't include state income taxes. Moreover, every extra percentage point of the workforce not retiring would mean at least another few billion dollars in revenues toward closing America's annual budget gap. It's good for the economy. University of Southern California economist Julie Zisimopoulos thinks older people working longer is an unambiguous good. Why? For the simple reason that it grows the labor force. How are we going to keep Social Security solvent? How are we going to keep uh, Medicare beneficiaries receiving the benefits that um, they have received in the past? In order to fund these, we need workers. We need people paying taxes. It's a problem economists have worried about for decades. As the population has aged, the number of workers supporting retirees has dropped, a trend we reported on back in 1990. When Social Security began paying benefits, there were 159 American workers being taxed for every retiree. By the late 1940s, we reported 23 years ago, 42 workers for every Social Security recipient. By 1970, only four workers and looking at the numbers these days, for 2011, for example, there were just 2.9 workers for every beneficiary. Social Security now pays out more in benefits than it receives in tax revenue. But according to Eugene Sturley of the Urban Institute, if, instead of retiring, more and more people 65 and older continue to work, the picture could change dramatically. Rather than just drawing from benefit programs, they'd be contributing to them. It's not just Social Security taxes or Medicare taxes, the types of taxes we might think of as necessary to support programs for the elderly, uh, but among the biggest gains for the, uh, for the government as a whole are with respect to income taxes. Higher income taxes means that it's easier to support 
uh, government programs without increasing tax rates. Sturley found that the Social Security taxes generated, if the average American were to retire five years later than normal, would make up better than half of the program's shortfall come 2045. If you were to factor in income tax revenue, the shortfall would be completely erased. Boston College's Alicia Minnell says there's an even more direct economic benefit to working longer. It makes the pie bigger. You have more people out there working with their capital to produce more stuff, so you get a bigger GDP, and uh, everyone is better off. Not every economist agrees, of course. Boston University's Larry Kotlikoff thinks the pluses of working longer are way overblown. Only a very small share of people over 65 are going to continue to work under the best of circumstances. So it really can't matter much to the macro economy or to our fiscal problems. It's just not a big enough effect. So you don't think that this is going to make that much of a difference? Even if we had uh, another 20 percent of people in their 60s continue to work through their 70s or 75, it just wouldn't add up to much. It's just not enough people earning enough money, paying enough taxes to matter much. What a surprise. Economists disagree. But it's certainly true that many who might want to stay in the workforce simply can't due to poor health, a strenuous job, the need to care for a sick family member. So we just don't know how many will. But says Gene Sterley, the portion of older people continuing to work has been growing for years. The Social Security Administration has consistently underestimated the extent to which older workers will work longer and constantly pushing up that projection. And as larger and larger shares of the population hit these older ages, someone has to produce the goods and services. And says Manel, that would be a good thing for the older workers, considering that 55 to 64 year olds have an average of only $120,000 saved for retirement. $120,000 may sound like a lot, but when you think about taking that out over 20, 30 year retirement, you're talking about only a few hundred dollars per month. So you mean if you've saved as much as $120,000 in your late 50s, you're still facing relative poverty? People are not going to have very much money if they retire at 64. So my view is the single most important thing they can do is to work as long as they possibly can. Mark Friedman, the founder of Encore.org, says there are major benefits to working longer for the workers themselves and for the broader economy. It's an extraordinary opportunity for individuals to have another chance to do something important, but really for a society which is discovering uh, a continent of human resources that's really only comparable to the emergence of women in new roles 30, 40 years ago. Now we wouldn't be able to contemplate being competitive globally without that talent pool. And I think 20, 30 years from now, we'll feel the same way about all these people in their 60s and 70s who are continuing to do important work. A nice thought for the nearly 8 million of us who are still working past traditional retirement age.